the um, the one that is used for cosplaying itself is cost, of course. Um, which, besides the uh, the quantity calculation, also contains the um, unit cost. So in here, I can view the whole calculation from code to description, source quantity multiplied by consumption and waste factors multiplied by unit costs resulting in total price. Uh, before we go to the next preset, I'd like to show the conversion of the component into an assembly. So we started this estimate by saying that the budget of this project is 29 million. Then we started learning about the design, started learning about the plans of the architect and the requirements by the owner. And we captured those requirements into these seven line items. Um, those seven line items have an average cost. And that average cost is multiplied by a very simple piece of geometry, which is just the, the building's perimeter. So it is a, uh, an element per floor level. We have six floor levels. We'll see that in a minute. And uh, they provide us with, for example, floor surface area. So floor surface area is the building perimeter, uh, sorry, the building footprint multiplied by the six levels. Multiply that with the unit cost results in a total cost for that line item. So let's say we want to start using that number instead of the initial assumption of 29 million. To do that, I say activate the assembly. So I evolved my estimate from one single line item into an assembly with seven components. So that means that from now on, I'm using the sum of these numbers to calculate the project cost. It is now 28 million. That is lower as indicated by this arrow. Now the third preset that I talked about was variance. And if I go into variance, and there is an additional column that shows up here. So we have code, description, quantity, etc. In addition to that, we have the variance column, which shows me the difference between the original price, 29 million, so that was the number that I plugged in uh, when I had a one line item estimate. And the current price, which is the result of adding up these values. That variance is 211,000. The variance at a cost per unit level is minus 2.04. So for the quantity of 103,802 square foot, which is the total square, square footage of the, uh, of the building, I have made a $2 difference by adding this level of granularity to the cost plan. I can repeat that and say now I want to do the same thing for substructure. Um, following the, the construction sequence, probably I'm going to focus on detailed quantity takeoff for the foundation first after I have established a, uh, a cost for the entire building. Uh, and I'm going to use the, the floor area for the, uh, the ground floor, uh, sorry, for the first floor, uh, to, to get that number. So I'm using gross floor area uh, of one level, multiply that with an average cost for previous projects, $37, and I'm going to replace the earlier assumption of $6.20 for the entire building square footage with a number that is more accurate for the current project. I select substructure and repeat activate assembly. And now we see that in the total price it went up um, to 700,000. So I now know what type of foundation it's going to be based on the number that I plugged here and using a different quantity. Um, my cost per unit has increased by 54 cents per square foot of the original number. And the variance is 56,000. That number 
came from a model-based uh, quantity takeoff, and I could reach that by I'm going back to the cost preset by clicking in the source quantity cell and then clicking the FX button which opens the formula editor. And the formula editor shows the list of takeoff items that we have in the project. You can click on the header to sort that list. And for this purpose we have selected the gross floor area uh, let's see, 001, it's a little bit further up. And as you can see, there's a, a check mark. That is the quantity that is currently used as input for the line item. Gross floor area, dash ID, and then the quantity floor surface area. If we want to look at where that is in the project, I would create a, uh, a new view set uh, with the takeoff, selecting the mini ta takeoff manager uh, with the 3D view and with the cost planner. So that really shows the connection between the three of them, and I was using this one, gross floor area. As you can see, that number was used in, in all these line items. Allowances is using a manual uh, takeoff number. And then, of course, isolate helps me to, to view the elements that we used. So that's really the blob in the first stage when I only have the, the sketch from the architect. That's about what I can do. Uh, but it still allows me to visualize to be able to know where the quantities are from and how I got to that number. Going back to the cost planner view. Um, if I start converting my um, uh, space requirements, so the, uh, the, the program uh, that was defined by, by owner together with the architect, I can start converting that into a simple 3D model. Um, we create uh, zones or, or spaces, and those zones or spaces help me to further refine, for example, the interiors, uh, because for each of the zone types, I can say something about the interior construction. First of all, I no longer want to use the footprint multiplied by the number of floor levels uh, to get the, the, the floor surface area. I want to use the net surface area of, uh, of the building's uh, square footage. So I'm adding up all the, the zones, square footages, and get to this number, 94,000. Uh, for stairs, I have an average number, and so the same applies to interior finishes. So again, I'm going to make the transition from a very rough number, a, a WAG, into something that is more detailed. Activate the assembly, go back to the uh, variance, and that shows me that by calculating that number uh, per space type, or as a, as a net surface area, it turns out that the cost is slightly lower. It is $140,000 less than what I assumed based on the average number that I applied to the total building square footage. I can repeat that again, interior finishes. So let's say I break that down into lab areas finishes. And it's quite possible that I can combine all the, the, the areas that I dedicated as, as lab areas. I can apply the same number per square foot for office areas. Office areas include uh, office space but also conference rooms. And I want to use the same level of finishes, so I'm just applying the same number. Combining the quantities in the formula and apply a, a cost per unit. And we have the common areas, uh, and we have the wall finishes broken down per each of the uh, individual spaces. So every time that I'm going into the next level, interior finishes, activate the assembly, I can see what the impact is. So now I've broken down the finishes, and now I'm higher again. That's 45,000. 
maybe the office space was more expensive than what I uh, counted with 